This may be a good time as any to talk about other performance and me memory related concerns with RTX GI. Basically, how can you make sure that you're getting the best possible quality and at the best possible speed? So let's look at that. Uh, uh, first thing to do, I think, is just to get a sense of how much RTX GI is costing you. You can do that with a stat GPU. And we'll see a couple of lines in here. Um, in this test scene, uh, uh, there's two lines to pay attention to. There's an uh, RTX GI update cost, which we can see is currently costing us about 0.6 to 0.8 milliseconds. Um, that's the basically the, the, the cost to do the ray tracing. Um, the RTX GI apply lighting, which is down a little bit further in the list, um, uh, has a lower cost at the moment. It's, it's at point, roughly 0.35 milliseconds. This is the cost to take that ray traced result, convert it to a texture and apply it back into the world. Um, and so, and, and to get a, a real sense of that, if I uh, full screen this, so I press F11, so you'll notice that my RTX GI update cost didn't go up by very much, but my apply lighting cost more than doubled. And that's because uh, the apply lighting is going to be very sensitive to your screen resolution. So if you're in 4K, it's going to cost a lot more. If you're in 1080p, it's going to cost less. Um, uh, your input resolution uh, you know, is going to uh, determine that cost quite a bit. That means that for this scene here with this one very dense GI volume, but still just one volume, um, we're spending about a, one and a half milliseconds uh, on GI. That's not bad, but we can do better. So how do we achieve that? Well, first and most important thing to do is to uh, go into your uh, project settings and scroll down on the sidebar to plugins and select RTX GI. And what you want to do is make sure you set a, a probe update ray budget. Now you'll notice if I uh, set this to zero, the RTX GI update cost goes up, right? Because uh, this this value here controls uh, it, it it limits the amount of uh, rays being fired per frame, and if if you have it completely unlimited, it'll just shoot as many rays as it, as it thinks it needs to, uh, with with no constraint. Um, so uh, by setting a, a hard cap here. Um, uh, you're, you're going to make sure that RTX GI never costs more than a certain amount. And that amount is the amount you determine. Now, I, again, I know from uh, experience that usually a couple few hundred thousand rays is a good play to, place to start. It's a good rule of thumb. Um, you might want to try, you know, for example, 300,000. You know, some scenes can work with that. You might need more like a million rays per frame. Um, and you may notice that the uh, the costs are not that different, right? Like to go from a half a million rays per frame to a million rays is another tenth of a millisecond or something like that. But if you want to make sure you're you're staying on a budget, you know, just set it to some uh, reasonably sized number where you can uh, generate enough uh, uh, rays without uh, uh, you know completely overwhelming the system, and uh, that'll help to make sure that your um, uh, uh, your RTX GI performance is, is consistent. So the, the ray budget directly uh, is, is probably your strongest direct influence on performance. Now, the, as, as I was saying before, the apply lighting cost, uh, which is right here, currently costing about 0.8 milliseconds when I full screen it, is directly tied to uh, your screen resolution what are, what are your input pixels? So uh, there's lots of ways to control that. Just as, uh, as a quick test, if I set my uh, screen percentage to uh, 50%, right? So it gets a little bit fuzzier and blurrier. We're doing less pixels, though. The RTX GI Apply Lighting Cost goes down by, look at that, it went down by to, to one quarter of its size. That makes sense. We're doing one quarter of the input pixels. So it, it scaled almost perfectly right there. So, okay, that gives us a sense of how we can affect this number. So there's different ways to do that. 
uh, if you're on an RTX card, the simple solution is just to use DLSS. You know, so uh, let's just go to performance mode where the image quality looks virtually identical to the native image, right? I saw it shift, but I can't tell the difference. Um, and the apply lighting cost uh, went down as expected to one quarter of the cost. I mean, uh, you know, this is where a technology like DLSS can have um, a big cost savings uh, because, of course, you'll pay for that uh, that DLSS processing time, you know, and usually about a half a millisecond, in this case 0.64 milliseconds. Uh, but it saves you performance in a number of other categories, including RTX GI apply lighting. So that's one way to get there. Uh, but let's say you don't want to do DLSS or it's not an option for you for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, we're looking at that total, that total GPU cost there. We want to get that number down. Um, another way to go is to uh, scale the, the apply lighting. So you can do that with um, uh, RTX GI DDGI lighting pass scale. And by default, it's one, um, but we can uh, set that anywhere from uh, uh, 0.25 to, to 1.0. So, uh, you know, we can, we can go down to 0.5 and see what that does. Same net effect. Half, half the image size is one quarter of the number of pixels. It cut the uh, apply lighting time to one quarter of the cost. And uh, it's just looking at the scene, it's not obvious to me that we lost any quality by doing that, but I definitely gained performance. Um, so, you know, it could be that even small shifts in that, um, in that value, you know, put it at... The 75 or 80 percent might get you exactly the the kind of um, uh, apply lighting performance you're looking for. As a test, we can go all the way down to, like I said, 25 percent, and we, now we can see that the apply lighting cost is almost negligible. It's less than a tenth of a millisecond. So um, it's very possible to get your RTX GI cost down um, with just a few tweaks. Uh, and in a way where you're not strongly affecting um, uh, the look that you're seeing. Of course, it, your mileage will vary. You'll have to QA it, you know, and check to make sure all your details are preserved. But usually uh, some combination of setting uh, a probe ray budget and uh, maybe uh, scaling the RTX GI application will do the trick. So let's go through a, a hypothetical scenario. You, you might be saying to yourself, well, how fast can I make this, right? Without really sacrificing any quality, any discernible quality. Uh, how fast can I make RTX GI? If I say I don't need it to dynamically update every frame, I just need GI in the scene, but I, I want to get the best possible uh, uh, quality that I can uh, w without that dynamicness. What's the fastest I can make this? Well, uh, that would probably be a combination of using the runtime static flag. And I'll bring up stat GPU so we can get a look at that. And then let's set the lighting pass scale to 50% while also using uh, DLSS in performance mode. Let's full screen that and run it in engine. So you can see by doing that, we have no RTX GI update cost, and our only cost related to RTX GI is the apply lighting, which is less than, well, yeah, it's less than a, a tenth of a millisecond, 0.8 milliseconds. And while that's not dynamic GI, it is GI that's present. So that would be about the fastest you could possibly make this. Um, and you have to admit that that's, that's pretty good. Like if 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 you're concerned, if you're Big concern was, I just want speed and I don't want to have to bake down lighting. What's the best I can do? That would be it right there. In fact, um, the Pro Bray budget in this case won't matter except for your, your editor performance uh, because at runtime, um, we're doing static GI. So just to put a fine point on that, if I go back to my project settings, let's just say hypothetically, I don't care about my uh, my editor performance, right? 
uh, my editor RTXGI update costs can be whatever it needs to be. Maybe I got a really beefy machine, um, but I care about what, what I get at runtime. So by setting it to be runtime static and, and setting that other C bar um, at runtime, that update cost will go away. So that's pretty fast GI. And uh, like I said, one of the advantages to um, the static mode is that it doesn't require ray tracing hardware to run. Um, it does require DX12 because um, all ray tracing effects uh, are DX12 based. It does require that, but you don't. Uh, no ray tracing is being performed at runtime when it comes to uh, RTX GI in static mode. So uh, yeah, th that data is just stored off and the textures are reprojected.